Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another board game unboxing. Today I'm super excited about this. I'm a huge Horrified fan. I saw that this game was at my local Target. I had to run down and buy it. I just had to do it. Um, but hey, this is uh, Horrified World of Monsters. A scream come true. Alright, looks like it's ages 10 up for 1 to 5 players. And as always, Ravenberg. Okay. So, save the world before terror overwhelms you. Now, this is a cooperative game. Um, if you know Horrified, there's not a whole lot different here. Just different components, different pieces, different setting, different bad guys. But the cool thing about this one is it's compatible with Greek monsters. For the first time, they made a Horrified compatible with a previous version of the game. That made me really excited because then I can take Greek monsters, which wasn't really my favorite, but I can now add it into this one here um, and see how it really plays out. So I'm excited about that. Looks like we're going to get four more epic monsters and a multi-phase Cthulhu challenge. I did see some stuff on that, and that looks super interesting. Okay, let's get this game open. Let's see what's on the inside. Now, as with all the Horrifieds, they have like these little... Um, they don't really shrink wrap the box. They put these little sticker pieces on the corners to hold them. I'm not a super fan of them, and I'll actually peel them off the box. Because if you leave them there, after about a year or so, then they just get super sticky. And when you take them off, you don't want to take them off, and I just don't like it. Oh, man. Okay, so when you first open the box, there you go. That's what you're going to see, the artwork on the bottom of the board. That is a really cool picture. That, that is fantastic. And on the back side, black. But hey, that's Cthulhu, man. Cthulhu eats you. You're going to see his eye, and that's all you're going to see the rest of your life. All right. No more jokes. All right, let's see. Let's open this thing up. So it looks like on the back of the board, and I always like looking at the board first. Any of you listen to me? No. Okay, so here we go. Wow, it's actually the standard size board. Okay, so we got uh, our terror track like normal. Solo plays, of course, you're going to start in the middle. You have all your different areas. Now, this void area, I don't know about just moving through it. I don't think you can because I think this is where Cthulhu is going to go, um, from, if I remember right. Um, see, I know there's some layer tokens that are going to go around the board um, and everything else, but that is what the board looks like. And as always, man, I, I, you know, these horrified games, I really like the artwork on these boards. Um, and I just, I, I've just always enjoyed it. All right, so let's, uh, I think I folded this board backwards. Now, that's also the other nice thing I liked about these boards is you can fold them backwards because they don't have that super tight seam down the middle. So there you go. But I just want that. I just want that eye right there. I mean, that eye just is, it's popping. It just needs to see what you're doing. Okay. All right. Stewards of the Shroud. Internal um, communications do not share. Salutations. So it looks like this is just going to be basically the, kind of a little intro story. Okay. And here's our rule book. All right. Okay. So it looks like our 31 Def Monster Tokens. Okay, so this, as, as all Horrifieds, this looks pretty much the same. Pretty much the same layout as everything else what I've seen. Okay. All right. And it looks like we got all the Stewards of the Shroud. So here's Cthulhu, uh, Jengshi, the Sphinx, and the Yeti. And then we got Cthulhu over here. All right. Now, this is your section right here. Combining Horrified Games. So this is going to talk about um, confine, confine, combining uh, Greek monsters into this one. All right, and it looks like just a continuation of there. So there you go. Uh, that combining Greek to this is that's really cool. All right, let's take a look at what we got with the monsters. Okay, so here's Cthulhu. All right, so we got the Cthulhu. We got your objective, the power. They changed the look of these definitely for sure because now we got one step, two step. Oh, and the backside as normal um, monster setup. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, this is the other board I wanted to look at. So this one, I believe, is the other part of Cthulhu. Yep, okay. So this is your step three and your step four. So now, if I understand correctly, and if, uh, looking at this earlier, when you play this game, you can play Cthulhu two ways. You can play them, if you complete step two, I think, that's kind of the easy method. But if you want the harder method, then you're going to go through and you're also going to complete steps three and four. Okay, and that's the more difficult way to play the game. And the back side of that, oh yeah, look at that artwork right there. That's fantastic. Sweet. 
All right. So let's take a look at the rest of these. We got Jing Shi. Looks like there's uh, some different tokens you're going to have to put down here. Okay. Uh, you have the Sphinx. Now, the Sphinx was actually kind of cool because the Sphinx, you're going to put some of your, your tokens down here. But what you have to solve the Sphinx's riddle. But if you notice, you have three tokens here, three tokens there, but lines that kind of go down. So these tokens here, the total of them, so you can put like a three, a three, and a, a four, or, okay, actually it'd be a five at that point. But the, add these together, they have to equal 11. Add these together, they have to equal a 10. But if you add these two together, they have to be a seven. So you have to make sure that when you put these and these, all of these have, have to equal, okay, um, and they're math. Once you've done that, then you can actually go kill the Sphinx. That was the cool thing that I saw about him. Uh, the Yeti, I haven't seen anything on the Yeti, so I, I can't tell you tell you about the Yeti. I just, you got the Yeti children on the board. I, I think I heard something about that. Oh, Jiang Shi, the Sphinx, the Yeti. Okay, there you go. There's 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 your four monsters. Okay, all right. I'm really excited to uh, get playing those monsters. All right, and as normal, here's let's see, we got them shrink wrapped. So I'm about to take these out, but like here's your tokens, like normal. You got your threes, your fours, you got some twos, okay? And it's the backside. Let's get these out of the shrink wrap. Let's take a look at them. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to be kind of cool to see how that... Uh, well, I think I really need to sharpen my knife. Because uh, it's a... I don't want to cut myself. It's a really old knife that I got from my folks a long time ago. And uh, yeah, it's just time to be sharpened. Okay, let's get this shrink wrap, wrap off. Let's take a look at those. But yeah, here, so I'll, I'll let you take a look at that. I got this when I was a kid. My, my, my dad, he's got an eagle tattoo on his forearm. My dad was a Green Beret in Vietnam, so he's big on eagles, and I really like the eagle on his tattoo. So my dad saw that for me and gave it to me when I was a kid, and I will have that till the day I die. Okay, and there you go. And those, as every horrified game goes, as you can see, those punch out really easy. Those are going to be the little tokens for the one for solving them. Yeah, everything punches out. Everything punches out really nice. I think I did half of that off the screen. Oh, sorry. All right, let's just throw those right there. Okay, so here's going to be the back side of this one, or the front side, and there's your back side. Okay. Now I know these tokens here are going to go for one of one of the the monsters, I believe, because you're going to be using those. You're going to be rotating them around. Okay, there's the other little pieces for, I think it was the Sphinx. No, it was uh, Zheng Shi, because you have these little circles and you have these little, you basically you're going to Tetris this in and you have to fill all this in by collecting all those. Okay, see here's all your different people that are going to be running around the town, where they're going to go. And oh, and these are the different, uh, like those little layer tokens in that layer section I was showing you. See, it's like some of these are actually already falling out. Okay, and these are going to be the characters you're going to be able to play. Here, I'll we'll actually show you those. All right, so you're going to get the Buccaneer. He's going to have three actions. Okay, the Parapsychologist is going to have four actions. We got the Investigator with four actions, the Guardian with five actions, and the Fortune Teller with four actions. Okay, and then of course you're going to have their standees for all of those. And this little Cthulhu piece, you're going to put him on his board. If you do steps three and four, he goes across the top. And it looks like these are little Yeti children. Those are cool. Okay, let's take a look now. Let's grab these figures out. All right, there is, there is Cthulhu. All right, not, these, I think, not the best. Horrified's never had, you know, the best 3D models. But, you know, one of my favorite things about this game, I mean, they're, they're, they're soft and everything, is the, they keep the price down, though. You know what? To me, this, this is good enough. This is absolutely good enough, especially if I'm not going to paint it. Whoop, there's your Yeti. Th this is absolutely good enough for me. Okay. Board games are just getting really... Jing Shi? I get that name wrong all the time. Jing Shi. Okay. Um, yeah, games are getting getting expensive and more expensive, so anything they can do to help keep those prices down, I'm happy. Okay, it looks like we got our standard bag for all of our counters. This is just like all the other ones. It's a nice little purple. Okay, 
horrified rule the monsters. There you go, you'll put them in. That's easily gonna fit right in there. Okay, let's take a look at the, the dice we're gonna get. I do like the look of these dice. Those, those are really cool looking. Those are really cool looking. Okay, put those in there. Okay, we're gonna have our standees. These look are gonna be the, about the same standees as all the others. Every character is gonna have their own color. Um, I know these do have like little ridges on the inside, so they will kind of grab a hold, but you know what? I, every horrified game I have, I put all the standees on, I've never taken them off. So I'm actually okay with that. If I was taking them off and it was gonna pull the cardboard out, that's when I care about that. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look at the deck of cards we're gonna get. Okay, for all our events and everything else, we're gonna get our our helper card. Let's see, so we got our hero phase. So it's gonna be just about the same as every other horrified game. Um, any player may look at any number of perk cards. Okay. Oh, for the reveal. All right, so you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five of those, which is good. Here, let's turn. Uh, what, what do we got here? Okay, so we get the perks in those. Let's slip those down. Okay, so here we go. So let's take a look at these. Are some of the different perks? If you need to. We're we'll look at these closer. You can actually kind of pause it. Okay. Oh, that's that's a cool little dog. All right, I like it. Okay. The pulse pummel spectral diverter. Yeah, these are cool. Ironclad buggy. Oh man, this this is actually really cool artwork. I like this. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like there's a couple of that clockwork companion. Pulse pump. Looks like there's a couple of each one of these, maybe. I'm kind of guessing based on what I'm seeing right there, there's about two of everything. Okay. And then these are going to be, the, look at this artwork. Ah, oh, see, that's just really cool artwork. Okay. And these are going to be all the cards that are going to activate at the end of the turn. If I remember right, this is a 30 card deck. If the deck ever runs out, looks like you got about two of every card. But if the deck ever runs out, you lose. So you have 30 turns basically to complete this game. Now, this is one of those games I never actually ever play really on a solo mode. I don't like playing just a single character. I always like to play two or three characters, sometimes even four. I'll just multi-hand them. Um, it's a cooperative game anyway, so then you just kind of go down all of them. All right, but there you go. That's the, all the cards. Okay. Oh, looks really good. This, Oops, didn't want to stack them with those. This looks just like every other Horrified, kind of along the same artwork line. Um, I'm just going to just kind of... Make sure everything fits back in the box here. I'll go reorganize this later because I got all the punch boards I got to take care of. We're just going to stick it back in here. But I hope this gives everybody a good idea of what you're going to get if you decide to get the latest iteration of Horrified. Um, like me, you know, this, this is one of those games I can pull this out with any group and I always have fun playing it. Um, I, beginners, this is, this is a, a wonderful game for beginner gamers. I've gotten so many people into board gaming because of this game and I love it. That I has to be on top. You just, you can't put this board away without doing that. You just can't do it. And all right, put the rules back on top. We're going to stick this lid on. I'm going to go pull those stickers off the side of this box as soon as I'm done, because I do not like having, having the tape on the side of the box. Hold it. And there we go. And that is horrified ladies and gentlemen. Hey, let me know in the comments below if you are a Horrified fan like I am. Or, you know what, you just may be Horrified out. This is the fourth one now. But I'm excited the fact that I can put the Greek monsters in this and I can change up the Greek monster theme. And it gives me a little bit more. And I actually might be able to get both uh, Greek monsters and, and this one into the same box. And if I can, that'll actually make me even happier about that. But hey, um, I hope this gives you a better idea. And as always, thanks for watching. Okay, so, uh, oh, hi there, this is, this is Blood and Rum, or Rum and Bones. Rum and Bones by, uh, by uh, Cool Mini or Not. And you know, a lot of times when you pick up a game, it's really uh, complicated and confusing, it's a very thick rule book, so I'm gonna go through what I call just like a real concise, quick rules. So what you got here is you got, this is a, this is a, a three to five player game, all right? And you have these three, these, these ones you can choose. I always like to choose Miss Mags because She's the hottest. So, but they all have different abilities and, and, and different things that they can do. Miss Mags, she has a distraction ability where one of the other players, they'll be like, hey, I'm supposed to be fighting this pirate over here, but like, Miss Mags, is, she's really low cut, and then you get an extra turn. 
So that's why I like to play him as Max. So basically the way this game works, it's a turn-based game. And, and what you do is, like, if I'm as Max, the first thing I do is I, I roll my dice. I roll four dice. Okay. All right. So I got this number here. I got, I got 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 points with which to distribute across the board. These guys are worth three points. The fat guy is worth five points. And the pirate captain is worth ten points. So where I had this many points, I can only move three guys. Now, I don't want to come across here because there's an orange guy. Orange guys are like dipl- displacer beasts. This is kind of combination between pirates and D&D. So what you do is I'm going to move these guys over here. I'm going to activate them onto this bridge. Now, what I've done is I've created a choke point. This is strategy. I'm not going to get into it. You figure out a strategy on your own, but that's what I choose to do is create choke points. This game is really all about just choke points. So now let's say I'm playing against Captain Daniel Pale here. He's a skeleton. His special ability is that since he's a skeleton, he's not affected by rum. So he doesn't get drunk. So as he's drinking all these different rum pieces here, he drinks them, but he doesn't get drunk, and so he's not affected. But then he gets the, the bonuses of the rum, but not the negatives of the rum. So then what he does is he comes out, he even roll his dice, so he rolls four dice. Since he is not affected by the rum, he gets five. Oh, good roll. He got a good roll. He actually got he got uh, a lot of points. So he's going to choose to move. Since he's the purple guys, he's going to move all of his guys to my choke point. This is one of the rare cases where a choke point does not help you because you rolled so high above what I had. This is like the one instance where that particular strategy it backfired for sure. And he actually takes out my hook anchor hand guy. These pirates don't have hook hands. They have anchor hands. This guy, which makes him way more bad A. So, but he took it out, so I guess he's not as tough as I'd hoped. He takes over the choke point, pretty much using my strategy against me, and then it goes on like that. So that's basically how you play Rum and Bones in a nutshell.